Good morning. When I went to college, earned my master's degree, one of the readings, the writers that I studied, was a priest named Karl Rahner. And I was so impressed by what he wrote. I was, I felt like I had been challenged to think about things in a whole different way. And one of the lines that he taught, that he wrote about, was that every human being that God has ever created, God has an eternal relationship with them. Not one that began when they were born, but one that began before time. That the relationship God has is so eclipsing this life on earth that it's still one that's dynamic and evolving. It's not finished. And when I look around, I love to people watch, and I wonder how many people really realize that God's invested in their lives long before they, they turn on the lights and know that God is there. It reminds me of a time when I lived at Big Bear Lake, and I taught, I ran the parish program, the religious ed program at the parish. And one night we were teaching middle school and high school, and I heard a lot of commotion that doors were slamming and opened my door and there was a seventh grade kid running down the hall, slammed the door, jumped in his mom's car and ran off and they drove off. I lived, Sean lived on the way home from me, so from the parish. So I swung by there after class and sat down on the couch with them, he and his mom, and said, what happened? Tell me what, what happened. And he said, I am, I just don't like that teacher. He does not respect me. And until he earns my respect, I'm not going to respect him. Now, a lot of us might nod our heads at that and say, yeah, that's pretty good. That, that makes sense. But on the other hand, I would think that we're called not to, not to end with respecting people after their behavior has earned it, but that we would start there, especially when I think about what Karl Rahner wrote, right? This sense that this eternal relationship that God has with all humanity is the basis and the foundation of our interaction with one another. This fact that I don't know everything there is to know, and I may not like them, I may not like their politics, I may not approve of their behavior, they may not respect me, and yet we're called to that. In fact, God pushes us even further and says not just to respect those with whom we share the world, but to love, that I would love my neighbor because God loves. That's it, period. That's the bottom line. I would respect and love my fellow human being because God loves them. We've experienced a lot of terrible things in this country over this last week. Death, murder, violence, riots, vandalism, evil mischief, people taking advantage of terrible situations and hijacking causes for their own. We may feel pretty comfortable about where we stand on what's happened. We've seen it unfold on the news and read it in the paper and seen it online and just kind of come to a conclusion. And yet I think we are called to reconsider the fact that every single person we saw in those images is loved by God, mysteriously, eternally loved by God. So it's not that easy, really. I don't get to write off people because as a believer, I'm called to more. I'm called to let God have the last word. To build my life on what God sees in the individuals, not what I do. In fact, I would hope that people would be able to see me the way God sees me, because I don't often behave in the best ways. That's a challenge. It's going to take us our whole life, and we're going to be pushed back in society because what we are opting for is countercultural. It's not what the world teaches. The world says, look, you earn my respect, you've got it. And we're saying, no, 
I believe in this mysterious eternal love that God has for you. And even though I don't get it yet, I'm going to behave in such a way that puts you in that area of deep love. So it's another one of those opportunities where we say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. You're the one that's going to have to love through me because my own stressed out, tense little heart doesn't always have the capacity to expand, to trust, to welcome the way you do. Help me to love unconditionally. Like I said, that's divine. We can only do it if we're connected to God.